CJ says, can see and hear. Okay, thank you. Davia says, yes, can see and hear you. Good evening, everyone from Joanna. I purchased the program about three years ago, and I guess she's going to get started. Greg looking good. Jim, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gerald Booth here, here now, Gerald. Dave from Fort Worth. How do I hear you, Connie? Fantastic. And race is race here. All right, guys. So real quick, um, just so everybody knows, I, I recently sent some massive emails out. One of the things we're running into in the process, um, hey, D, nice to see you there. Uh, I covered for Kathy. She's the administrative person that handles submissions. I'm going to turn this off for a minute. I know there's a delay from when, I, when I'm talking and you guys are chatting. So I'm going to turn this off for just a moment. I will turn it back on for questions. Uh, so I'm disabling chat for right now. Sorry about that. And please don't use the Q&A, just the uh, chat only when it pops up. Uh, and real quick, hi, Priscilla, Clifford, Kenneth, Greg. Uh, Linda P, Marie Lou, uh, look good, sound good. Thank you, sir. Um, so one of the things that we ran into recently that was interesting is people were saying, "Hey, I'm, I'm turning stuff in, and I'm getting a little bit of dis a little bit of disappointment." And particularly in those states where you've got an older population, right? So what we used to do is, if you turn something into us, Jeff would underwrite it first, and then after he would underwrite it. It would go back to Kathy, our, our uh, uh, paperwork person, and she would take it and skip trace it and then put it in database management system and then pass it out to the case managers. Well, what happened was there was an issue there where we would we used to not tell you guys if somebody died. If there's only one deed holder uh, on the surplus funds deal, there's only a certain way we can work that if they died. Same thing with deed flips, just so you guys know on the flipping programs, um, I can't, I've got to be able to get anybody, all names that are on that deed to sign. It's the only way I can get hundred percent of the property. If I get three people to sign out of four, I own 75% of the property. <laughs> so I really don't own it. Right. So it's important that, uh, we of course check to see if they died because we're not going to be able to work it unless we have a way to confirm that the, it, uh, transferred from one person to another. And I'm about to get into that. I need everybody to listen carefully. So Here's the deal. If we look at the deed and we see it's John and Patricia White, let's just say, right? It says John and Patricia, Patricia White, and uh, it says comma, joint tenants with rights of survivorship, or it says in most states, it says married, or it says husband and wife. And I'm sorry, I, I just got done eating dinner, guys. I know I've got some stuff here. Anyway, sorry. Um, or it says husband and wife are married. If one of them died, prior to the foreclosure, their interest in that property, this is surplus funds, okay? Transferred directly over to the other person at the time of death. Only thing we gotta do usually is dig up a death certificate um, to show to the court, and we're good on the surplus funds recovery. Because of a joint, joint tenants with rights of survivorship means that one person uh, died and the survivor now has full or had full ownership of the property at the time that happened. As long as it happened before the foreclosure, we don't have to open a state of probate. Beautiful thing. Deed flips are very similar uh, with the deed flip program. If I've got a husband and wife and one died and it's transferred, obviously this is before foreclosure. We have to buy it before the foreclosure. But if that happened, we can take care of that as well. Let me check just in case Jeff's checking up with me because um, I've gotten some, some hits here. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask tonight. It's it's a really busy time. And uh, I want to get to your questions as quickly as I can. Okay, let's set that to the side. So that's important. But one of the things is we started telling you guys when somebody died. If it was a situation where we couldn't work it, we'd say, hey, this person died. We, we can't work it. And we thought we were doing everybody a solid, right? Because then you'd know, okay, it turned in five files, but one of them, the person was dead. So I actually turned in four files that were workable. Makes sense. But then we started getting people arguing about whether or not the person was dead. We're using really good, high quality skip tracing systems, guys that are extremely accurate. We're just not going to, we're not going to argue about that. Um, all right, let me get back. I'm going to open up the chat. Not a whole lot to report guys. Um, you probably saw that I'm, I'm putting a pretty good bit of video on our YouTube channel, which is surplus funds, riches, all one word. Um, we're starting back up our Instagram. We haven't had that thing rolling in forever. 
Uh, I did get two checks today, uh, one for 48,000 and one for 63, they were retrievals. Uh, client's name were Rosenbaum. I'm trying to think of the other one here. Uh, Rosenbaum was Ohio. Uh, and then the other one was a, I believe a Florida was 48,000. Um, so anyway, those are the two we're working. I reached out to the uh, researchers on those, those already. Uh, I will hopefully get those out. Um, the checks out tomorrow, um, to the researchers. So that'll be done. Of course, we're making final payments tomorrow to the uh, claimants as well. And that seems to be, that's about a half a week's worth of production. It's not bad. Just because of the dollar, the dollar's high. Let's see. We're going to enable chat. Guys, ask any and all questions. One thing I'm going to ask a favor of you, and uh, you know, this is something we've also seen that's kind of a little concerning to me, and that is that people will come to the webinar instead of using support. Jeff handles support. It's email-based. He gets back in one business day. Please, we have these webinars uh, twice a month. So about once every two weeks, uh, please, if you would um, use support as outlined in the ebook, certainly don't wait two weeks to get an answer. Use support instead because Jeff will get back typically in one business day. Okay, chat's enabled. Let me open this up. All right, so definitely don't, don't, you know, not use support, you know. Another thing we got is people would say, well, I, I was going to ask support a question before I turned in, but I turned in that messed up and use support we put that into the system for a reason guys okay um we were thinking we're going to pull the system down for a little while here next week um but we're not we're going to keep that thing rolling a little bit here a little bit longer before we start uh monitoring we've got great great people working for us right now uh wonderful wonderful folks and researchers so uh we're going to keep rolling with what we've got and we reserve the right to pull it off if we want to Ah, Joe. Hey, that's a great question, man. Keep the good questions coming. So Joe asked, which do you prefer an S Corp or LLC and why? Uh, it's interesting because there's a young guy selling a, a program out there and he says, oh, I don't know why everybody's it, why everybody's worried. You guys aren't starting to work the program because you're afraid you're going to get sued. Well, first of all, you guys cannot first just so you know, you guys cannot get sued if you're a researcher for me or whatever. And you're probably not going to get sued. But the reason people get LLCs is they want to keep themselves, they want to have something there, uh, usually for protection. You're, you're, he's right, you're probably not going to get sued. I'm not going to say you're not, because I don't know what you're doing. You could say something, you could defraud somebody, I have no idea, or lie about the amount. Um, but as far as LLC or S-Corps, Joe, there's a difference. It depends on you and your tax situation, what you're going to write off. Personally, I like an S-Corp. And there's, I'm going to give you some really good reasons why I think an S corp trunks trumps an LLC. First of all, now with the with the S corps, you only need one officer. It used to be you needed two or three. Now it's just one. I can write whatever I want into the bylaws. For instance, I buy and sell property in Tennessee. Uh, I don't feel like paying the fifteen hundred dollars a year or whatever the heck it is. It's extremely high for registering my foreign corporation in there and dealing with my. Uh, buying and selling property in Tennessee through the corporation when the registration fee is so high every year uh, to register it as a foreign corporation in that state. I was able to write in my by bylaws that I, as a representative of the company, can buy it and sell it in my own name. The company will take care of uh, any issues that, excuse me, that might come up uh, as a result of that. Uh, and as a result, I can buy and sell property in my personal name, but because my bylaws read the way they do, I can do that. I, I can actually consider it corporate income. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, there's a lot of other neat little loopholes, like I can rent back a car that I've purchased to the company on paper. Don't have to actually show transfer of funds um, and get some write-offs from that. I just think the subchapter S, it may not be quite as bulletproof as an LLC, which nothing's bulletproof, guys. Anybody can pierce the veil, uh, regardless of what you have. But I really, in my opinion, in my experience, a subchapter S corporation is just the way to go. It's fantastic. Um, for the National Surplus Fund Program, is it still 20000 minimum as a case? Yes, T. Guys, always go to the resources page, the most updated. If there's any changes or whatever, the updated uh, stuff will be right there on the resources page. You really need to take a look at that at least every uh, week or two. 
Uh, Michael, do you have anyone you refer to in Canada to get help as far as how income is reported or special forms are needed? Michael, um, if you're talking about how are, how are we going to report everything? If you're an independent contractor for me, I'm going to 1099 you, even if you're Canadian. I mean, I can do that. Um, it's that easy. Uh, I do have somebody working in Canada, but he's got his own corporation and it makes it a little easier for him to do that. Clifford, I'm not going to repeat that question. I'm going to say, with her permission, yes. All right, Lynn, Sean, you can please clarify the difference in the regular surplus course and the Premier 16, since the regular is soup to nuts and the 16 stops at the warm cold. Thanks. All right, so Lynn, that's why we we tend to put them together. Most people that want to get the Premier 16 program, um, they want it, That's what they want. They want to be a, just a higher end independent contractor with us. Uh, the national surplus teaches everything, um, but that version, the national surplus only pays 8% of gross, but all you got to do is research debt uh, and fill out our worksheet with that and turn it in and we do the rest. As far as the Premier 16, you also have to find the people, call them and have a warm conversation to make sure they're willing to speak with us. Um, so those are the differences. Ray, hi, I do a lot of driving and wondering if there's an audio version of the PowerPlay bundle I just bought. There's not, Ray. Um, you can certainly listen to the videos that are on the resources page uh, as posted. I've thought about that in the past. It's something I've considered, but I'm not going to promise it. I understand why you want to do that. You really, guys, this is, uh, for most of you guys, the majority of, of the material is new and it's a new skill set. That's why we always tell people read the ebook portion because it's step by step. Read the ebook portion at least once at least twice, I should say, twice for comprehension, just to get a real feel for the concepts. And then you can also follow the link and watch the videos for additional training. Ah, uh, I know I have to reread the NS, the National Surplus Funds ebook. This is Ray. But can you say a few words about LLCs? Can we work in an LLC that is in tax overage, Ray? That's right on the resources page. You need to, yes, you need to reread the book. Um, but Jeff's got that set up. He handles the front line and the underwriting. If I give you an answer tonight, it'll be the wrong one. Uh, so I would say definitely check your resources page. I don't believe we worked those with the national surplus funds, but I could be wrong. Linda, for Florida deed flip, I keep linking to the calendar for auction dates for bidders instead of the tax lien list. The two recordings are a bit confusing. Linda, for Florida deed flip, you want un upcoming tax deed sales, not tax lien. We're not going to, you want upcoming tax deed sales. You want to go after the sales that are about to go to foreclosure where they're taking the property. That's when we buy it. We don't buy it when, when there's a tax lien. We don't go through all that because there's no sense of urgency. When a tax lien is being sold on a property, all that's happening is investors buying the debt. They then circle back around and there's a bunch of different ways to do it with states, but then they ask the county to foreclose on the property so they can get their money back. And then it goes to tax deed sale. Those links are correct. Trust the links, Linda. You're you're overthinking. I remember there, our conversation earlier. You're overthinking this stuff. Um, no, if there's somebody, Jeff put, okay, guys, um, Jeff put a lot of links on that Florida DFLA program just because there isn't a link there. You, you can find the link for the upcoming tax deed sales for that county. You can literally go upcoming tax deed sales, that county, that state, and you can find a list, uh, in, particularly in Florida, really easily. You're, you're overthinking, Linda. You're, you're thinking, oh my God, there's not a link there, so we must not be able to work it. No, he just did a, everybody a favor by throwing all those on there. John, grandparents died. Granddaughter found a $102,000 deed. Grandparents died granddaughter found a 102k deed I, that makes zero sense to me john uh not found yet found parcel number need to ask the ladies at county for help john i'm gonna need you to break that down into sentences for me i got no clue what you're asking me no offense diana question please i am in the program if we are unable to access court records on the county site can we use a service that will give you court case reports including records case details case summary etc diana um move on to another county that has the available that stuff online i i think you're probably just not finding it there's very few 
very few areas where you can't find information online. Uh, move on to someplace where you can. Uh, Lou, are mortgage overages harder to do since there isn't an urgency time limit like the tax overages? One year availability of excess proceeds. Actually, Lou, that's different from state to state. You need to check the statutes. Mortgage overages, the beauty with mortgage over, well, here's the deal. Mortgage overages and tax, you have to research debt because if there was additional debt besides what foreclosed, that debt is a priority claim to the overage in front of the owner. With mortgage overages, it is more frequent that you're going to find additional debt. Because of that, a lot of people don't work mortgage overages. So you may have to go through more of them and research debt uh, on more of those and have to put them to the side because there's debt than you would on a tax, but nobody's competing with you. So I would not say that they're harder by any means. Joanne, I purchased it about three years ago, but struggled and did continue. Is the course I purchased still the one you use now? Joanne, if it's three years ago, absolutely. And updates are on the resources page. Todd, can you explain the flip deeds a bit more? I want to make the best decision on which product to come in on. I am sold. You got it, Todd. Listen, <clears throat> what we're doing with the deed flip is we, you guys, on your end, what your role is, is to get a list of upcoming tax deed sales in a county. Doesn't matter where it is. Please, please don't get hung up and just working where you live. This is online, right? So pull up, pull up uh, upcoming tax deed sales research uh you'll see that it'll list the property parcel id numbers a lot of information you're going to research to make sure there is not additional debt against the property with tax sales there usually is not okay and you send it into us we find the people put the deal together hire the mobile notary uh get every, get a deed signed and a contract signed as soon as i get that deed back i record it at the county usually we're at the last the 11th hour i record that deed a quit claim deed not quick quit claim deed at the county. As soon as it's recorded, I pay off the taxes. That stops the foreclosure because we do all this prior to when the foreclosure hits, the tax foreclosure. At this point, I send whatever I agreed to to the owner. Sometimes they need to stay there for a month. If I Let's say I agree to pay them 30 grand. I'm going to pay them five now and 25 when they get out. And, and it sounds mean, but it's the only thing, they're not afraid of the county, right? They played chicken with the county, so they're not afraid with me. of me. I'll say, listen, it's five grand now, 25 grand when you get out. You've got a month to get out by noon at this date, Eastern Standard Time. If you're not out, it's 2,000 less for every day you stay. That's it. And if you stay for over three days, I've got the option of just hiring an attorney to reject you. So you, you need, I'm very upfront with that with these guys because you've got to do cash for keys. You cannot, they will try to stay. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the national deed flip. And we pay with that one 15% of net. Okay, you're researching the debt against the property and a quick research online using online resources to come up with a value, an average of three different values, Zillow, Redfin, whatever. Okay, Realtor.com, whatever. With deed flip 30, you get 30%, but for that 30, you've got to not only research the debt and the value, you've got to find the people and have a warm conversation to make sure, okay, they're willing to speak with us. Now, Todd, to answer your question a little more in depth, a lot of people ask me this. What do I buy? What, what, what should I start with? It's up to what you can handle uh, and what is, I never like anybody to get overextended on what they buy. Obviously, the best deal we got is the diamond. It's like 23, 24 programs for 2297. I think it's 23 programs. That's the best deal out there just because the sheer number of programs you get. The gold is fantastic. It has national surplus um, and premier 16 surplus has national deed flip and premier, uh, I'm sorry, deed flip 30. It has both the Florida programs and Florida tends to be a little easier to work. And that's a separate state for us, uh, both with deed flips and surplus. Sorry, I've got something on my teeth, I know. Um, and then it also has a, a North Carolina flipping program. The gold is wonderful. If you can afford it, that one's 997. The diamond's 2297. The best of the best um, is another drop down, another one in there. There's a couple of different uh I would definitely, if you can afford it and you're comfortable, I would get a bundle. The best of the best has national surplus, national deed flip, uh, deed flip 30, premier 16 surplus. Uh, and it also has, good Lord, North Carolina flip master, right? No, no, I'm sorry. Best of the best has national surplus, national deed flip, Florida deed flip, Florida surplus, North Carolina flip master. And North Carolina has some cool loopholes that make us make that the highest converting state that we work for flips. Ahmed, hello everyone. Hey, Ahmed. John, I understand book page, need help researching deed and debt. Um, 
John, watch that video. I know that that was really involved, but open up your ebook, go to the resources page. There's a link with a password to your resources page. Watch the title work video. That, that No problem with that. It'll teach you how to do that. Ahmed, can I do surplus funds in the state of New Jersey? Ahmed, I don't care where anybody lives. You can do it in, all over the country. Um, New Jersey is a little weird just because I understand what, what I've heard before. Sometimes it's a little more difficult to get into the registered deeds department. I may be incorrect about that. Having said that, don't get caught up and work in your local area. Something I covered earlier. Um, work in another state. It's online from home. It's not difficult. So I wouldn't just work your area. I hope that answered your question. Um, Kathy, hi, Sean. Under a scenario of a surplus fund is in the name of an inactive LLC, no longer business. Can it be claimed and how? It can, Kathy. The way you're going to have to do that is one of two moves. Uh, we're not going to work with you on that. Okay. Because it's whenever the, with, whenever there's too many cogs involved, right? Too many different pieces to the puzzle. We bail on it. Um, there's two ways to do that. One is to contact whoever was in charge of that. And usually the secretary of state will give you, uh, will, will give you the, the resources to find out who was in charge of the LLC or the administrators, the officers or whatever. Contact them, see if they want to make it active again. If they're not, you can also, another way you can go after them, it's called our Zombie Business Reviver Program. Um, that is awesome. It teaches you how to buy the, the, the company uh, and reactivate it. Make the claim, now you own the company. You sh you've shown it's the same company as before. You buy it usually for nothing, a couple hundred bucks. Um, reactivate it, collect the surplus, deactivate it, get out of there. You're done. Uh, that's called the zombie business reviver course. That's a great question you got. Um, if you bought a program from us before, uh, you can go to your resources page linked from your ebook. And on there should be a past buyer loyalty discount. And I believe we sell the zombie business reviver for $347 or $397 by itself. Okay. Chandra. I paid for the Premier 16. I was wondering if I could just do the research first to get the hang of it. I'm nervous. No problem, Chandra. Go back to the site. What you're saying is you don't want to call people. You don't want to do that portion of the Premier 16. Go back to the site and National Surplus is on there. We still have that uh, priced out at 497 I would go back to the site and buy it there. Hi again, Sean. This is Ray. Uh, is there an opportunity to flip properties from foreclosure list located here in Southern California? Would it be great if I could partner up with actual house flips? Um, so as far as partnering, Ray, we have the two options. National D flip uh, has two options. One of them, you research debt and you send in and we have, it's got to be a low dollar house. We, we dumpster dive. We don't do the high dollar stuff. We don't do, we don't, we're not going after home runs. Sorry. Um, is there an opportunity to flip programs for foreclosure? So the national surplus, the national deed flip, uh, you research debt and value, turn it into us, and we give you 15% of our net. That's pretty good. Uh, the other one is the deed flip 30. We give you 30% of our net. Um, however, with that one, with that program, you have to also find them, call them, and have a warm conversation. I do not do hybrid versions of these systems, guys. I don't. Uh, let's see, John. $102,000 overage. I must learn how to do deed search and, and debt research. No, it's not department. Um, John, by the program, surplusfundsriches.net, um, surplusfundsriches.net. Uh, click on products, go in and buy the National Surplus Funds Program. They'll tell you how to do that. Just so you know, John, I, you don't know if there's debt. So I, I understand your trepidation. If you're just trying to do this for one person, you'd be I mean, you could also hire an attorney for a couple of grand to help your granddaughter. Um, I don't know how else to do that, but uh, we teach you how to do research. So if you're looking to get in the business, buy the program. Um, Kenneth, hello, Sean. I recently purchased National plus the Premier 16. was very attracted by the fact you're the only company offering to pay the claimant 10% up front. What do you say to a claimant who, upon informing them that they have unclean funds available to them, how much, as well as telling them exactly where their money is? When they tell you, I thank you for letting me know, I will now hire a learner. I've never, just so you know, Kenneth, I think you're thinking this, this is what's going to happen. Let me, let me continue with what he's saying. I will now hire a lawyer myself to help me get out of my unclaimed funds. Now that I know I have unclaimed money and exactly where it is, what do I now need you, you for? 
Kenneth, they don't say that. I'm giving them 10% up front. They want the money. Last time they had to deal with it, it was an attorney. It was a county attorney. Ken, get out of your head. That's not what happens. My girls never, my case managers never get that. You're assuming something that's not going to happen. Make the call. If you got Premier 16, make the call. If you, if you don't want to make that call, use your national surplus funds and let us make the call. But I'm telling you, nobody ever goes, oh, gee, thanks for the information. I'm going to go claim it now. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Erica, I have a client who would like more info on my company. I emailed you about the GoDaddy site. I didn't receive that, Erica. I get my emails by the second um, and was told the site was getting rebuilt. Oh, you're talking about um, uh, Rightful Owner Project. What can I give to the client? I advanced surplus pro pack, which includes lifetime membership RP. Um, I would like more information on my company. I'd write up some information on your company. You don't need Rightful Owner Project for that. Dennis, National Deed Flow. The book says you do not want to research 100 cases to get two possible deals, not dollar productive, so target homeowner association for closures. No, I, Dennis, if it says that, I don't know where it says that, uh, disregard that. Disregard that. I, I don't know where the National Deed Flow book says that. Um, I, I don't remember ever writing that or Jeff writing that. So if that's what it says, ignore it. Brian, did I miss the Zoom call for the first 30 people that purchased a time flipping program? No, you're included in it, Brian. That Zoom call is, you need to read your ebook. You guys, I'm getting a little, okay? You need to read the ebooks you buy. Um, that Zoom call is one on one on the time, people that bought time flipping, it's one on one. And that is when you've got somebody ready to go and you can provide the case information. There's literally a sheet you fill out and email to me for that Zoom meeting. Brian, read your book. You got to do it. Eric, should I forget about deed flips and redemption states and wait till the auction is over and then work the redemption program? Um, that or Eric, just work deed flips um, in states where there is no redemption. That's at least half of them. You're working in those states. There's, there's plenty to work. Tony, can I send another file if I haven't heard anything for three weeks? The claim is not on the surplus list. Hey, Tony, don't ever wait that long. If you sent in an, uh, um, something and it isn't it didn't show up in a week, uh, sent, resubmit it. John, what is the typical learning curve for, for deed research and debt research? Oh, this is the guy trying to do that. Um, it depends on the individual. John, I've had people turn stuff in in three days and they just got it cold. I've turned people that I've had people that took a week. Um, depends on how hard you research it and uh, and you work it. Davia, I plan to purchase. Just want to know if I start with the overage course once I master it, how do I then purchase the diamond package without duplicating the overage courses? You don't, Davia. Um, we don't apply purchases toward the other, you know, you can't buy national surplus, come back and go, okay, I want to get, now I want to get um, the diamond bundle, but I want you to take 497 off that because that's what I paid for national surplus. We don't do that. Um, Brandy, what's the conversion rate on the deed flip? Uh, which program is the quickest to get paid on surplus funds or deed flip? Okay, so Brandy, here's the deal. If you've got both of them, so conversion is going to, it's, we never touch that. It's different from state to state. And I don't know what you're, what kind of work you're going to do. So, and what you're going to turn into me, right? I, I just don't. So as far as which program is the quickest to get paid on right now, deed flips have always consistently been a little faster than surplus deals. However, surplus is just so freaking hot right now um, that if you've got both programs, work the surplus over the deed flip. I would. Ray from Ray B looking forward to get the bundle that has the Florida program, because by looking at the files being work list, you can tell people are just hammering Florida. Um, yeah, Ray, it's the, op the opportunities are awesome though in Florida still open. Um, and it's not that people are hammering it and that's how many that's why so many are on the list it's because florida every county does at least once a month tax sale a lot of them do twice a month i kid you not and then of course you still have mortgage you can get mortgage and tax overage lists in florida it's unbelievable so it's not that it's getting hammered it's that the opportunity is that crazy down there and yeah the best of the best gold and diamond bundles all have that john pro pack is at 16 percent of successful overage gross amount Yes, guys, our, whenever we give a percentage on surplus, so 8% of gross for national surplus, it's 8% of whatever surplus we got out of the court, okay? We don't take out attorney fees and what we paid the owner and all that, and then give you 8%. We give you 8% of whatever the heck we got out of the court. $50,000 overage and we got 50,000 out, we give you 8% of that. 
16% of that if you're using the Premier, Premier 16. The D flips we pay on net simply because there's way too many moving parts. You know, we can't look at sales price uh, and and come up with a value. So the beauty with D flips though is the average net is 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 well above forty thousand. So those are good hits too. That's a great question, John. Linda, what I was trying to say was tax lien certificates seem to be mixed with the tax deed sale auctions. Very confusing. Okay, Linda, just work tax deed auctions. Um, is there a place where they don't occur in the same page? Sorry, Sean. No, just if, if if you've got tax lien and tax deed sales, which I I've never seen that, but if you do, um, just work the tax deed ones. Um, you said Florida records twice, one for sale and once for certificate. Can you explain this? Linda, on the Florida program, you need to read that whole book twice. It's 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 step by step and it's screenshots. Just do the do the steps. Don't get involved in figuring the, the reason behind it will come to you. But just do the steps. Um, but yes, in most states that have tax lien certificates that then have tax deed sales, they sell tax liens to investors. They're not selling the property. They're just making sure they have enough money in their budget to meet their obligations. So they're selling the debt to an uh, investor and then the investor gets like 10% return. And then they sell the tax deed sale and it's for taxes and whatever the investor's percentage is. You don't want to work the tax liens. You want to work the tax deeds. If there's a county that's mixing them up, I go to another one. But actually, I swear you really, you really do the step by step and move to another county if it's confusing for you. Um, but you know, if you're still confused, Lynn, I'm not trying to blow you off. Um, you support is outlined in the ebook, and Jeff will help you right, walk you right through. Um, it's just really not. We find a lot of people overcomplicate. I'm not saying you are, but a lot of people overcomplicate things. Just if it's got both tax deed and tax lien sales and they're broken out, break them out. You know what I mean? Brian, are you still looking for investment funds? If so, what's the procedure to be an investor? Uh, Brian, uh, team bougie at Gmail is my email address. The minimum investment I'm looking for. I'm sorry. Now these days is 30 grand. I'm not going to need anything until January or February or December or January, I should say. Um, so I would send you a prospectus as long as, as well as examples of what we do and how we pay on that. Great question. Carmen, how do I how do I find a bank that will allow you to deposit the checks if they're not in your name? Carmen, you don't. You don't. Nobody's going to. I can cash their party checks. It took a team of my attorneys talking to the bank attorneys to get that done. You're not going to be able to do it. I'm just telling you right now. That's why you hire an attorney. The attorney get out in the claimant name and uses their trust account to break the deck out. 